the price of silver isn't manipulated. What are you talking about? That's what they want us to believe. But I have some new data we're going to look at today that shows the price of silver is manipulated. I got an email this morning from my good friend, Oren Elbaz. He runs a web, uh, I'm sorry, a YouTube channel called The Silver Hermit. He does in-depth research into the silver markets. Let me tell you what he, and I'm just going to read you a snippet of what he said, but this to me definitively points out some interesting facts about the silver market and the COMEX and that the price of silver is indeed manipulated. I mean, what the heck guys? We've talked about this before, right? If the price of silver was really whatever it's at right now, $22.50 per ounce on the COMEX, if that was really the price, wouldn't supply and demand be in balance? That's not. That's the way markets work, right? When there's more demand than supply, the price goes up. Now, I guess they've been pulling silver out of the COMEX warehouses, the LBMA warehouses. We know that. Uh, I think Ted Butler, one of the guys said there's been 400 million ounces of silver that have left the vaults of the COMEX and the LBMA over the last three years. But at the end of the day, they're manipulating down the price of gold and silver. And actually, Oren, uh, I would go to at some point, remember, write this down for later, the Silver Hermit, okay? And then you can go to his YouTube page and you can subscribe to his, uh, what, what's it called, Substack. I got the written version of what he made a video about, and I read the whole thing. It's like 10 pages long. It's very interesting about the manipulation of the silver price and the gold price. Let me just read this little snippet to you. According to the Commitment of Traders reports, which look, I'm not a guru in any of this, but that's a report that comes out every week, I think it is, that shows which side of the trade put the traders are on for silver. The eight largest traders are currently short over 140 days of global production of silver. They've sold the next 140 days short, right? So what would that be? Uh, probably about 300 or 400 million ounces of silver. Um, over 100 days of global, global production in platinum are sold short, and over 70 days of global production of gold. As you can see from a chart, no other commodity has such a huge position. And I think he said this in the article, you gotta realize, when on those markets, when they're short, they're selling. They're selling. That's that selling pressure on these items, on silver, on gold, on platinum. It pushes the price down. Uh, okay, and then and I've got to where'd it go? Oh shoot! I'm sorry. I need to run over and grab a chart. I'll be back in like two seconds. Hold on one second. And it's a chart, a chart that has coloring on it. All right, I'm back. So I need to show you this chart here in one second. Very interesting. Unicorn fart dust. Yeah, okay. There are, <clears throat> there are other signs that something nefarious is going on at the COMEX. Take, for instance, the peculiar habit of the price of gold and silver to drop sharply at precisely 10 o'clock in the morning. Have you noticed that? Coin Shop Chris likes to point that out, and, and, and I notice it as well. It's like, seems like the same time every day, there's a big drop in either gold or silver. New York time, that's New York time. When trading at the COMEX begins, rational traders, <laughs> uh, not manipulators, rational traders, which are seeking to achieve the best possible price for the metals they are selling, would surely avoid this time of the day. But for some obscure reason, sellers keep piling in at, exact at the exact same time, almost on a daily basis. And that's what this chart, who knows, do you know what this is a chart of? This is from Oren. I printed it from his article. It's got a number of great charts in there. It says the price of silver, but I, but I uh, scratched out silver and changed it to the price of unicorn fart dust, because that's what it is. It's make-believe, it's unicorn fart dust silver, it's paper silver, it's electronic silver. That's the price of silver on the COMEX. Those circles, 
are 10 o'clock on what is that? Six different days in January. Do you notice a trend at 10 o'clock? Exactly. Oh, price went down. 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 Price got slammed. And you're going to sit here and tell us that the price of silver is not manipulated on the COMEX? And in his article, uh, Oren pointed out something very, very interesting. Okay? That is that. Oh, can you guys see me? Gosh darn it. This is driving me crazy. For some reason, I can't see myself. Anyway, maybe that's a good thing. Pointed out something very interesting. That uh, back in the 70s, this was a, a coordinated government uh, plan to in, uh, induce volatility. This is not tinfoil hat conspiracy theory. This came out in the wiki links. These, there were copies of telegrams, I guess they sent in the 1960s when they were talking about, we need to uh, introduce volatility into the gold and silver markets. Oh, and we can do that by setting up futures exchanges. And that's just what they did. And that's just what they're doing right now. Okay, look, it's most, and, and, and I think, and maybe you feel this. I mean, guys, if you're, look, here's, here's a fact about you and me, okay? Um, we are tough, okay? They have done everything they can to demoralize you as a precious metals investor. That is an absolute fact. And the fact that you've hung tough, the fact that you're here in the basement, that you still understand the fundamental thesis behind silver and gold speaks volumes about you. And I'm glad you're here. Please give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel because you'll get a piece of new content every single day. And most importantly, you can have some fun and make some friends when you're here as well. We are the Mr. Rogers neighborhood of silver and gold. We are the Davids fighting against the Goliaths. Now, one more pertinent piece of information regarding this manipulation of the price of silver on the COMEX. On Friday, February 2nd, yes, that would have been six days ago, when we received these unbelievably great employment numbers, and that sent the price of everything, of metals, crashing, right? The price of silver dropped almost a full dollar in one hour after that number came out. In 15 minutes during that process, there were almost 12,000 contracts, paper, unicorn fart dust, this stuff, traded on the COMEX, okay? In 15 minutes, that's the equivalent of 60,000 ounces of silver. I'm sorry, 60 million ounces of silver. That's the equivalent of like 7 or 8% of all the silver that's mined over an entire year. So in 15 minutes... When the price got smashed by a dollar, 15 minutes, it's not a very long time. They traded the equivalent of seven, eight, five, six, whatever percent of the, excuse me, entire year's production of silver. So you're going to tell us that silver's not uh, manipulated. I don't know. Anyway, thank you to our friend Oren. What a great article. I honestly have not had a chance to watch the video, but he and I are going to make a video here down the road. You know, we have been demoralized like we talked about, but we will hang tough, okay? What do you think? Are you making a lot of money in the stock market? I'm not, okay? I'm invested in precious metal mining stocks. I'm losing money on paper, right? But if you're invested in the S&P 500, you're rich. You're absolutely rich. And I'm going to call it what it is right now. Not completely, but I'll say 64%, the, the S&P 500 has turned into nothing but a Ponzi. And do you want, here's some unbelievable data that I heard last night, okay? Um, it's interesting to consider that most gains in the S&P 500 are in just a handful of stocks. Uh, only around, in the S&P 500, only around 40% of the names are above their 10-day moving average. Less than 60% are above their 50-day moving average, and less than 70% are above their 200-day moving average. That means that while we've got the magnificent seven, right, Facebook, Apple, Microsoft, uh, NVIDIA, whatever, there's a few more, are doing really well. If you own those stocks, congratulations. You're rich, at least on paper for now. Everything else is kind of doing crappy. We own some 3M, Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing, right? Blue chip stock, blah, blah. No, it's like, 
it's like a third of where it was at its high, okay? Um, if you own some other big, and that's really the only non-mining stock that we own, unfortunately, which we had NVIDIA, right? But if you own those, you're doing great. Everybody else, but here, are you feeling it, okay? Listen to this. This data will shock you, okay? The top 50% of the U.S. measured, of the United States measured by income, so the 50% of people that make the most income own 94% of the country's assets, okay? The top 50% measured by income own 94% of the country's assets. The top 10% owns a third of all the assets. The top 50%, this was shocking to me, because they're talking about how the market affects the economy. If you're rich in America, you're great. I used to, my grandpa's 94 years old. I got his clock over there. I showed it to you guys. We we were like, before he died, I spent a lot of time with him. And we were talking one day, I'll never forget it. And we both came to the same conclusion. In the United States, <clears throat> you're better off either being really rich or really poor. Okay, because if you're really rich, you're, you, you know, everything is set up in your favor. If you're really poor, well, you don't have to, you know, not necessarily work that hard and, and you can still do okay. The people in the middle get the raw end of the stick, okay? The bottom, okay, the top 50% does 85% of the spending in this consumer-based economy that we live in. The bottom 50% owns way more of the debt the rich people own all the assets and the poor people have all the debt. And what don't we talk about that all the time? Gold is the money of royalty. Silver is the money of gentlemen. <clears throat> and debt is the currency of the slave class. And that's what this country, I'm, you know, I, you know, I don't, you, we didn't create it. I don't necessarily agree with it, but it is the situation that we're on right now. <clears throat> how about how about our old friend Jerome Powell? He issued a big warning about the national debt, right? What about Jamie Dimon? He issued a big warning about the national debt. Jerome Powell, think about this now. Jerome Powell, <laughs> old Gomer Powell, uh, Jamie Dimon, yeah, old Jamie Dimon, uh, Ron's basement. We've been issuing warning about it for a while, right? Ron's basement, and now. Bank of America Chief Executive Officer Brian Moynihan, Moynihan, it's a weird name, Moynihan, says, quote, we need to get after America's $34 trillion debt. You can either admire the problem, what's he mean by that, or do something about it. Uh, he was speaking on a podcast and he said, uh, quote, we got to start paying attention, not only in this country, but around the world. And that's the fact, guys. It's not just here in the United States. It's around the world we have this debt problem, the debt level as a percentage of GDP. Yeah, and I heard something from Ray Dalio. Um, you know, sometimes like, like the most simple things, I don't know about you, but a lot of times like the most simple things uh, I don't think about, like, I don't think about that I'm wearing glasses right now, right? It's just right in front of me. And and Ray Dalio said something that I thought was just, it was like, wow, I never thought about it that way. And it was real simple. He said, all this debt, right? A hundred and whatever, $30 trillion in national debt, all these derivatives, all the, he said, you got to remember that there's somebody who thinks they're going to get paid for all that. And the debts have grown so big that they're almost untenable. Like we've we've like multiplied the debt so large in the United States on a worldwide basis, can it ever really be paid off? Like if we said no more debt ever, can't create any new debt right now, could the world like get back to zero? I don't think so. I think it's not possible, and I think that that leads us to this idea that all fiat money systems eventually erupt. They crash. They disintegrate, right? Paper money, money that's not based on real assets. They all always go to zero. And that's what we're headed for. That's why we like to hold silver and gold, but it's been painful. Heck, it's probably painful today. Although I will say when I woke up, gold was down. Here's your gold update. Let's do it. Where'd I put it? Let's do a quick update of gold. Come on, gold. Come on, silver. Silver was up. Strange behavior today in the market. The gold price, down $2.90. It was down uh, $10 earlier. So we'll, we'll take it, you know. Uh, silver, 
up 30 cents. Hi ho, silver. Okay. And I forgot to mention this to you earlier. I apologize, basement dwellers, but it's important for us to remember gold. Have you noticed this about gold? The price of gold. I'm going to get in close to the mic here. The price of gold has been really steady above $2,000. It feels like for almost three months now, two months, something's going on, huh? Like gold is still hanging tough, right? And Chris Marcus talked about that the other day when I was talking to him. He's like, well, you know, we talk about how hard it is in the precious metal sector, but, you know, we got to like, you know, gold's been to gold at 2040, 2000, probably 50 or 60 in the futures market. Um, you know, it's been number one, real steady. Number two, what do we talk about? Basement dwellers, right? Gold is still within a stone's throw or spitting distance of a new all-time high. And I won't go into it. You know, when it gets there, when it goes to that new all-time high, there is no overhead resistance. There is nothing stopping us from moving even higher. Hey, I want to say thank you to our channel sponsor, Pimbex. We got a new box and a little bit bigger logo, but Pimbex is still the same. It's the place you want to go if you want the best prices, service, and selection. If you're shopping around online for, let's say, silver or gold or platinum, one of those precious metals, do yourself a favor and throw Pimbex into the mix. You need to discover it for yourself. Discover what I discovered. They check all the boxes. Thank you, Pimbex, for sponsoring Ron's Basement. And they can help out with IRA conversions as well. Whether it's an IRA conversion or buying metal that you get delivered to your door in a box that says Pimbex, Pimbex is best. You will get more metal for your money. Let's move on to bank. Okay, we need to start thinking about how to change the curves. This is moin your hand around. So more revenue, less expenditures, some combination of both. But you have to start to bend that curve in the future. This is uh, Bank of America CEO Brian Moynihan talking about the debt bomb that's heading our way. Uh, people recognize you can admire the problem or you can do something about it. So we have to get after it. So we've got Jerome Powell, head of the Federal Reserve. Jamie Dimon, head of the biggest bank in the universe. And Brian Moynihan, head of the second biggest bank. I don't know if that's accurate or not, but they're the heads of big, big big banks, the Fed, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Bank of America, all of which are saying, we got trouble in paradise. Do you want to hear about how to get free furniture? You want free furniture? Brand new, free furniture from Costco. Yes, that Costco where you can get silver and gold. You're going to learn about that later, but let's just recap. <laughs> this is fun. This is fun. We're going to talk about um, the Fed real quickly. Six Fed speakers in the last few days. Kugler, and they're all coming out with hawkish news. So we, I won't even, I'll just read you a couple of these. Kugler, Kashkari, Barkin, Collins. There's a risk that inflation progress stalls. Reasonable chance that rates settle higher. They're all saying different things. Uh, Kashkari, we're not all the way there on inflation yet, right? They're all, they're all talking hawkishly. That's you know, supporting the U.S. dollar because we know that U.S. dollar is the is the beacon of value, and you know it's based on this very high quality paper that they printed on. So we got the Fed out there doing their clown show. I mean, it's ridiculous, guys. Take a step. Let's take a step back and think about this. If the Fed was if the Fed was uh, based on real money, let's say silver, gold, like it you know was it sometimes in the past. If if the Fed wasn't dealing with fake money, why else would they have to send all these clowns out and give all these speeches to talk about? It's it's it turned into a public relations firm. Is all it is, right? If it, if, it, if it wasn't fake money, if it was real money, nobody, they wouldn't have to talk about anything. But since it's fake, since it's make-believe, unicorn fart dust money, they got to send the Fed, they got to send them out, right? To, to send, but like, pro, it's almost like propaganda, all right? Oh, this is what we're doing and we're blah, blah. You know, it's like the Wizard of Oz behind the curtain. It's what, I don't care what anybody thinks. 
okay. I'll tell you what I think. I'll tell you what I know. I think the best, I've got a lot of analogies. The Fed Fun House, we've talked about that. All kinds of analogies. I really think the Titanic is the best analogy for what's going on. Me and you are going on a trip on the Titanic. We're in our cabin. We start to notice the crew acting a little funny. They're running around. They look nervous. And they say, everything's fine. Everything's fine, guys. Everything's fine. I'm like, I don't think everything's fine. And we kind of go and we're walking around trying to see what's going on. And you and me say to each other, you know what? We better get on a lifeboat, right? Let's get, let's just be safe. Let's get into a lifeboat because I'm starting to smell a little smoke. Although it wasn't a fire that destroyed the Titanic. But where's, where, where there's smoke, there's fire. We'd rather be on the safe side. We get on the first lifeboat that gets off the Titanic. That's the gold and silver lifeboat, okay? We get in that boat, people on the boat are like, oh, you're crazy, you're a worry wart, what's wrong with you? You're a tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist, you're a gold. It's the gold and silver lifeboat. And we got a few, thank you, Metal Seer. Thank you, thank you. I'm gonna read that here in a little bit. But we get on that, um, that lifeboat, now my computer's not even working, hold on here, guys, and we, if the few other people, right? That's the one in a hundred people that are on the boat that are like us that are thinking, oh, maybe things are a little, uh, a little bad. We get on that lifeboat and and we got we're floating out and everybody's still on the boat. They're laughing at us. Oh, look at those people! But we can look back at the boat from afar, right? And we can see it starting to tilt in the water. But everybody's still partying, and, 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 and Captain Jerome, with his hat on, is up there telling everybody, just relax, everything's fine on the boat. But we can see from afar that it's starting to tilt. And then when it starts to go down, everybody's jumping off, and they want to get in the silver and gold boat with us. I think that's the best analogy. You may not agree with me. Uh, let's see here. Hold on. Metal Seer says... The Fed's Kashkari says there's an infinite amount of cash at the Federal Reserve. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and that's a fundamental reason why we hold precious metals. There's an infinite amount of cash, electronic, paper, whatever you want to call it. But there's only so much silver and gold on the face of this earth. And coincidentally, it's getting much, much harder to find. Let's ring the bell 10 times. We got 120 thumbs up. I'm a little late, so I'll ring it 12 times. Thank you to our channel sponsors, Fortuna Silver and First Mining Gold. Fortuna is a, is a producing gold and silver mining company. They've got operations spread around the globe. Argentina, Peru, Mexico, Burkina Faso, uh, Cote d'Ivoire. And they also have an exciting exploration project in uh, called Diamba Sud, which is in Senegal. Growing company, quality company. Uh, you can check them out at fortunasilver.com. First Mining Gold has been a longtime channel sponsor. Both of those are company stocks that I own. I'm not giving financial advice, okay? Mining stocks are risky. They also offer an uh, excellent opportunity for price appreciation if uh, market conditions improve only slightly. But First Mining Gold is a development company. They have two 5 million ounce deposits in Canada. Okay, Spring Pole in Ontario and the Duparquet project in Quebec. When you own First Mining Gold, it's almost like you own a, a bunch of gold in the world's safest vault. It's in the ground in Canada. They have other projects as well. Altogether, they have almost 13 million ounces of gold in the ground in Canada. And they're working through the development phase. So there'll be a number of exciting uh, catalysts as we move through. But thank you to Fortuna Silver, fortunasilver.com, and First Mining Gold, firstmininggold.com. If you have any questions about First Mining, you can reach out to Paul Morris, their Director of Investor Relations. Uh, we'll put a link to his email in the description of this video. Now, let's move on, 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 on. Don't forget, we have a big Valentine's Day giveaway. Do you want some free silver? Buttercup. <laughs> Buttercup is a term of endearment that I like to use. Basement dwellers, you're really a basement dweller. And it's a big deal you're here. Don't forget, thumbs up. Help get the word out to more people. Let me know what you think about the new Pimbex box. I tried to make the logo a little better because I love Pimbex. But Pimbex did donate some silver toward. Let me show you what we're going to be giving away on Valentine's Day that you can win. Okay, hold on. Right there, 
Look at all that. Our friend Jim M gave us five silver bars. Pinbex gave us a beautiful 10 ounce bar. Our friend Jim B gave us these two four ounce bars. Coin Shop Chris gave us these two uh, pieces of constitutional. And uh, gosh, who else? Oh my gosh. Very nice lady in California. I want to say Kimberly. And I'm, my brain, I can only think so fast, is, it gave us that. But anyway, there's 25 ounces, okay? Uh, go to the description of this or any video after the live stream. It's real easy to enter. During the live stream, it's going to be exciting on Valentine's Day, which is a week from yesterday. Oh, my gosh. Uh, we're going to give that away during the live stream. So make sure you tune in for that one. Uh, don't forget, we're going to learn about how to get free furniture from Costco. Uh, the New York Bank Corp. I haven't looked this morning. Hold on. I wonder how that's doing. New York Community Bank Corp. I'm going to tell you. Let me look up their stock. NYCB. That's the bank that's going bust up in, uh, uh, oh, shoot, stock. There we go. Up in New York. Oh, it's down 6% today. Interesting. Down to $4. That's the bank uh, that's having some problems with commercial real estate and some other matters. That's the bank that took on the assets of, hold on here. Wow. The chart of this is scary. That stock had been as high as $14 not too long ago, and now it's at $4. But everything's fine. Don't worry. Don't worry. Look, when these banks, right, when this, when this wave of commercial real estate uh, doom hits them, <coughs> we're going to be in for some interesting times with the, uh, with the banking stocks. So why would they put out a press release in the middle of the night? Right? Why would New York Community Bank Corp, uh, they were attempting to reassure investors about their deposits, liquidity, and governance following a week-long plunge in the company's stock and its decision by Moody's to cut the bank rating to junk. Um, uh, the $116 billion commercial real estate lender put out a press release around midnight on Tuesday following the downgrade from Moody's telling everybody, don't worry, don't worry, everything's fine, right? <coughs> right? Like, remember when uh, Ben Bernanke said, oh, the banking system's fine right before the great financial crisis, right? Remember when Gomer Pyle and Janet Yellen were telling us two or three years ago, don't worry about inflation, it won't be a problem. Excuse me. So um, we're going to keep a close eye on that, right? Because we know what happened last time, about a year ago, that we had a banking crisis. A lot of these things that we look at, like, oh, this is going to happen, right? We got the banking, the commercial real estate banking crisis. We got the their their uh, their bailout program, the bank term funding program. It expires here in about a month. Uh, we got the reverse repo program that's going to be running out of money. That was like the cash slush fund that the Fed had left over from all the money it printed back in 2020, that's running out. We got a lot of things. And the government is running out of money again in March. The federal government might get shut down again. We got some big things coming at us. But have you ever noticed that? Like when it's really hard to predict a crisis, okay? So uh, when me, when I or other content creators are pointing this stuff out, I'm, I'm just going to be complete. Like, to me, it looks like there's a crisis coming, no doubt about it. But my experience in life, and we got the big election, and we got the bricks, and we got 2024 is going to be the craziest year ever, and gold and silver are going to go to the moon. And I do believe that, but I also know that from past experience, have you experienced this? Like, it's very hard to predict um, a crisis. And a lot of times when you hear that a, a crisis is coming, uh, they wind up being a big nothing burger. We got big problems in the Middle East, geopolitical problems. I mean, look, we're, we're not, you know, this is not a political show. This is not a show where we say, you know, right or wrong, but we will talk about big issues that are going on in the world and how they will affect the geopolitical landscape. And right now we got more big trouble coming out of the Middle East because Saudi Arabia is standing pat, drawing a line in the sand, pardon the pun, because there is actually a lot of sand over there, 
uh, on the Israel-Palestine situation. Are the BRICs flexing their muscle? Are the BRICs flexing their muscles? <laughs> I almost busted through this shirt when I flexed for you there. <laughs> uh, Rihad, which is Saudi Arabia, has made it clear in the Wednesday statement that Saudi-Israel peace is off the table until an independent Palestinian state is recognized on the 1967 borders with East Jerusalem as its capital. So any hope that our supposed ally, um, Saudi Arabia, would come to the peace table with Israel and accept things, it's basically in a nutshell, guys, it's still a big mess over there. And Israel, I'm sorry, Saudi Arabia, from what I'm making of this, is going against the wishes of the United States. That guy Blinken was over there. Now, look, I don't know Blinken, 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 whatever his name is. Something creeps me out about him. I'm just being honest. I've never met him. Maybe if he comes here to the basement, he's more than welcome. I'd love to talk to him. I might feel differently. But when I see him on TV and I listen to him, the guy creeps me out. Just being honest. Uh, Russia. Now, so we got that going on. And what is Russia? Russia just says, well, we're going to blow up the world. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh about that. But that's what Russia says. Here, uh, asymmetric. The world. We talk about asymmetric. That means not even. Uh, in response to EU calls for war with Russia. So all throughout the European Union, we're having these countries telling their citizens, you better, we don't want you to freak out, but you better prepare, be preparing for war with Russia because Russia is going to invade Europe, right? Now, we'll hear more about that. I think Tucker Carlson is interviewing Vladimir Putin. That'll be very interesting uh, interview for us to listen to. But nonetheless, all throughout Europe, I know in the UK, I think Poland, different countries, they're kind of prepping everyone. You better, you know, just in case, be prepared. Okay. And this is what, how Russia responded to that. Uh, and, that and this was Meddev. He said, that's when he said that the people in the West have to be told the blunt truth. Medvedev underscored that the Russian response to an attack by NATO would without doubt be asymmetrical, right? That means bigger and badder. You attack us, and we're going to attack you back, but we're going to attack you back in a bigger and badder way. This is Medvedev. And he's, I have to admit, he's kind of like, he's like a, a guy that scares me a little bit. Um, you know, these guys, these Russian guys are tough. He says, quote, since our military capabilities are incomparable, we will simply have no choice. The response will be asymmetrical, meaning we'll, we'll respond with more force to protect the territorial integrity of our country. Ballistic and cruise missiles with special warheads will be used. This will be the proverbial apocalypse, apocalypse, the end of everything. That's a quote, okay, from a Russian government official, Mr. Medvedev. So, silver and gold, their primary purpose, when you strip it all down, all the different symptoms, fiat money, all these different symptoms that we like to talk about, right? It makes good conversation. It makes for a good part of the thesis. Really, those are all symptoms of a core issue that silver and gold have always been the answer to. And that core issue is geopolitical uncertainty. And we, I believe, do you believe that right now we have geopolitical uncertainty like, like we've never had before, you know? Um, uh, and, and, and the smartest guys in the room in the silver and gold community, I hear them refer to that. It's kind of a blanket term. It doesn't, you think, oh, geopolitical. Well, yeah, the symptoms are what we just read. The symptoms are what's going on in Ukraine. The symptoms are what's going on in, um, in, in the Middle East. The symptoms are what is going on in China. There's all types of symptoms. The bottom core root uh, reason is geopolitical uncertainty, okay? Hey, we're going to talk about now, have a little fun, how you can get free furniture from Costco. I don't know if you've heard about this, uh, but I also want to mention real quickly to you, I've met a super nice guy who's a fellow YouTube content creator. He has a channel called Pound of Gold. If you think my videos are too long, <laughs> 
His videos are all three minutes long. Again, it's called Pound of Gold. When you get a chance, go check it out. Super nice guy. He makes some great content. And you know when you meet somebody, and I, you know, I, you know, I've talked with him now three or four times on the phone, but you just get a good gut feel. He's a really quality guy that puts out some great content. So here we go. Here's how you can get. Now, you know, you know you can buy silver and gold at Costco, but did you know a number one, a social media influencer that returned a couch to Costco after using it for more than two years is telling her followers to buy all their furniture from Costco because, quote, you can return it when you don't like it anymore. <laughs> you can basically get free furniture. I guess Costco has a very liberal return policy. I just want to warn you, they will not take returns on silver eagles, which they're selling, or silver gold coin, I'm sorry, gold, silver gold, gold coins, which they're also selling, okay? But they'll return apparently most anything else. A woman named Jackie shared that she bought a, co a couch from Costco over two and a half years ago in a short video she posted last week that attracted over 3 million views. Jackie admits she was nervous to return the large item to the warehouse store and felt intimidated by other shoppers staring at her while waiting in line. But who cares? Return it. They have an awesome return policy, she tells her fo followers. Buy your furniture from Costco, girl. You can return it when you don't like it anymore. I mean, what's the country come to? And I understand also, I don't know if you've heard this, but there's like a massive problem with return fraud like Amazon is dealing with and Walmart and Target where people do fraudulent things when returning items like they'll they'll do they'll process a return with Amazon and then instead of sending whatever they're supposed to send in the box they'll send like a brick or something like that and keep the money so i mean what's you know i guess you know when you figure that in cities like San Francisco or other urban areas people just walk into Walgreens and take whatever they want and walk out knowing that there's going to be no ramifications now i mean that sounds like something i would do <laughs> you can just go to costco buy your furniture use it for a cup i tell you what in my house with twin 11 year old daughters and Susie and i we use our couch a lot uh we we in two years they'd be like we don't even recognize that couch anymore but you know it just shows the state of the country you know the other thing here but it's just to me this is scary that this is going on. The United States Navy is having a real difficult time recruiting young people. And so they've decided that a radical new approach is needed, right? They can't recruit people, right? Oh, hey guys, let's get to 200 thumbs up. All right, we wanna ring the cowbell. We'll do a big ring of the cowbell at 200 thumbs up. Um, they say, quote, we get thousands of people into our recruiting stations every year that want to join the Navy, but they don't have an education credential. Uh, and we just turned them away. Now, did you listen to this? Now, the Navy will accept some of those potential recruits lacking a high school diploma or a GED, assuming they're able to score 50 or above on the qualification test. Uh, the move comes after the service previously lowered their qualification requirement in 2022. So they already lowered their requirement. And now the Navy, now, if you want to join the Navy, you don't even have to graduate from high school. Now, look, I'm not a big, like, uh, you, you guys that know me know I'm not, like, a big, I have a bachelor's degree from a top university, okay, in accounting. <laughs> this is what you do with an accounting degree. Um, I'm not a big, like, and I work for a college at night, uh, a good college, but I'm not a big, like, super, and my daughters go to a good school district, but here's the deal, man. I think at this point of the game, they've lowered the, um, they, they've lowered the bar so much that it's really easy to get a high school degree, okay? If you show up and just put a little bit of effort in, guys, right? Or if you don't even, or even if you just want to get a GED, they aren't making this like mission impossible. <clears throat> and if our country is getting to the point where the United States Navy is saying, yeah, we'll take anybody. You don't need a college degree. You don't need to worry about it. Uh, I think that's a pretty sad uh, a commentary on what's going on in this country. Okay. I'll be right back. Give me one second. I'll have a drink of coffee. Okay. We're going to talk more.
man, you guys have been ripping me about my silver eight times. Will the price of silver, the price of silver, how, how do you react to this statement? The price of silver could go up 10 times in value. That would be what? $220 silver, $225 silver. How do you react to that? How does that make you feel? Because I have this new concept, right? It's called the Ron's Basement Silver 8X Rule. And I'm getting ripped. I mean, just getting emails saying that I'm of nothing but a silver pumper and that Look, I get I don't I don't make any commission if you buy silver gold anything from from Pimbex. I think they're a great company. They do sponsor the show, but what I get paid has nothing to do with how much you buy. So I'm not trying to convince anybody. And I always say do your own due diligence, make your own decisions, right? Uh, nonetheless, I'm getting just attacked for my bronze basement silver 8x rule law. Do you not like it? I mean, do you not want to see the price of silver go up by eight times, maybe more, maybe 20 times? It did do that during the 70s. I'm not saying that it's going to do that again, but I think we could have exponential returns. And I don't know if you understand what I'm saying, right? Like right now, you, right, silver investor, even gold investor, but we'll use silver for this example. You're one in 100 people. When the banking crisis hits, when the reverse repo crisis hits, when people start to wake up, right? Like they, we've had tastes of it during the, the during the health crisis in 2020. We had a taste of it during the banking crisis that we had just less than a year ago. People wake up temporarily, right? It gets papered over, it gets fixed by the Fed. But when this big problem hits where it can't immediately get papered over and people start to go to the grocery store, Imagine walking into the grocery store. You and me, we're going to get some groceries before we go on our cruise on the Titanic. And I say, hey, we need to get a gallon of milk. Wow, a gallon of milk is almost $10 now, right? And that's going to happen. I believe that's going to happen. And that's when people are really going to freak. That's when people are really going to wake up. And we're not just going to have a boom a uh, little period of high demand for silver and gold. We're going to have a big, we're going to go from us here, basement dwellers, right? Being one in a hundred people to being four in a hundred people. And that'll mean four times the amount of money chasing the same limited and decreasing uh, availability of silver in the market, especially for the retail investors. And then it's going to get even amplified further because it's not just going to be four times because silver investors buy more silver when the price and premiums go up. That's just a fact. Okay. So that'll be maybe everybody, all those four people will be buying, let's say twice as much. That'll be eight times. And that can happen very, very quickly. So I, you know, I understand you don't agree with me on that. That's fine. But I know that's the case. I know that this stuff, right? Look at this. Is it going to shine? Can we get it to shine? Oh, look, it's shining, right? Yeah, right? This stuff, it's easy to get right now. Go to your local coin shop. Go to Pimbex. Go to any of the big beat online bullion dealers. They're, they're giving it away. Prices and premiums are low, okay? Well, we know one thing. We know one thing. Hold on here, basement dwellers. We know one thing for sure. Premiums are near, I mean, they're low. They're low, low, low as I remember in five years. I mean, um, you can buy sovereign, some of these sovereign coins, uh, now that silver's up today, but for $25.50, right? Um, the the Australia, Austrian Philharmonic, some of the Australian, Austrian and Australian. You can buy them for, let's say, 26 bucks. Right, a couple dollars over spot, two or three dollars over spot. Rem I want to. I want you to remember something. One year ago, less than a year ago, I was talking to Coin Shop Chris. American Silver Eagles were selling for fifty-two dollars each. Fifty-two dollars each. And the, what was the price of silver? I don't honestly. I don't remember. Was it twenty-eight, twenty-four? I don't know. But right now, you can go to places like Pimbex. Or other places as well. It doesn't matter. And Pimbex will usually have always have the best prices. But nonetheless, 
you can buy American Silver Eagles for $28, $29. Correct me if I'm wrong. Like half of what they were selling for. So we know one thing. Premiums are definitely down. We can check that box. Price down? I don't know. Can price go lower? Absolutely. This price of silver can go lower. Will it go lower? It could, right? I don't think it will go much lower, but it could. We could see. I, in the worst, let's just be prepared for the worst. The worst case scenario, I could maybe see us hitting uh, $18 silver. But even then, if it gets that low, right, I can guarantee you there's going to be a, a rush of people coming in and the premiums will go up. I can be wrong. Don't make any silver buying decisions based on anything I'm saying. But when I look at the current um, uh, situation in the market with premiums being where they are and on top of that, what I think is a low price Silver miners can't produce silver at this price, right? They're they're lucky to break even. If they're breaking even, I got news for you. They're not investing any new money into exploring for more silver. They're not investing any new money into expanding their processing facilities. You know why? Because they don't have money. <laughs> they're not they're not generating, right? Gold miners are a different story. You know, a company like Fortuna Silver, which is actually producing more gold now, they're generating a lot of free cash flow. And we're going to hear about their fourth quarter here in a month or so. And I expect because they did pay off a big chunk of debt in the fourth quarter, the only way they'd be able to pay off 40 million in debt is if they were making a lot of free cash flow. But Silver miners, a pure silver mining company, is not making a lot of cash. So there's no investment going into the silver industry. Very little. Very little. Right? We've talked about this. Right? you got to search for silver exploration companies. Suma Silver is one of them. Dolly Varden Silver is one of them. Uh, Capitan Silver in Mexico. But there just aren't a lot out there. In man, are they cheap. I mean, the whole mining sector, guys, has been decimated. And in the long run, what does that mean for the price of the physical metal that you hold? That's a good thing, okay? Because, because of the fact that the mining sector has been decimated. It's bad for my portfolio, but good for the price of the physical metal in the long run because there's no sustaining investments being made into the mining sector, right? And the pipeline... This is the thing, and I'm going to ring that 200 bell here in one second. This is the thing. The, the mining business, silver and gold, right, that supplies new metal. And remember, silver, they're not even supplying as much as is being demanded. There's more being demanded. They're taking it out of stockpiles. But it's a depletion business, right? Every time that a silver miner or a gold miner mines an ounce of silver or gold out of, out of the ground, there's only so much in the world, and there's only so much that those miners own on their property. That's one less. And if they're not continuing to feed their pipeline, that means at some point, in the it's like they're living off their savings, a lot of these companies, especially the silver miners, that at some point that gets reflected in the true market price. The day when we have real true price discovery in the precious metals market. The day when the COMEX says, sorry, they've drained us, right? The demand for silver got so big that they drained every, we don't, oh, we still trade make-believe silver. We have make-believe, right? Yeah, paper silver, right? But the day when the world calls monkey, right? That day is coming. I firmly believe that. I firmly believe that I need to ring the 200 bell 200 thumbs up. You guys are awesome. Thank you. A couple more rings for Jake. I appreciate you being here today. Don't forget, basement dwellers, I will. I try to do this every day. Well, I've been doing it every day, and it's a big deal when you come here. I appreciate you being here. Please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Okay, leave a comment in the comment section below. But I want you to, I want to end with this. It's actually the first thing I had on my list. I thought this was a good one. This was a good one. If the best, if this is a thought, 
Are you ready for a thought? It's about how nobody's perfect, including you. Don't you don't have to be perfect, right? Right? My dad would always say Jesus was perfect, but they crucified him. Anyway, um, if the best man's faults were written on his forehead, it would it would make him pull his hat over his eyes. That means that the best man in the world had his faults written on his forehead. The best man, he would pull his hat over his eyes. That's a Gaelic proverb that tells us all, none of us are perfect, uh, but what we can do is treat ourselves well, treat others around us well, but you got to start with yourself. So you're perfectly imperfect, so am I, but when you're here, we're perfectly together. I hope you have a perfect rest of your day. We appreciate you being here. We appreciate the support, the super chats. Uh, thank you, and I'll see you soon.